So I've been scratching my head a while now trying to figure out just how I want to mount this because there's two big problems I'm facing. The biggest problem is the, 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 general, the general snout. You see, normally this gets mounted to the inside of the wall and it protrudes out. However, the wall of this shed is two and a half inches. It's quite a bit wider. So if you can imagine, the kind of dumb gape you're gonna end up having. I don't like that. The second problem is where the, the stud seams are. In order to mount this on here, it would cut in right into these stud seams. Now these seams, they're like the virtual stud work of the shed. They are the supporting members for the most part. And I don't really want to cut into them if I don't have to. You can. Ideally, you might want to do it like with a seam in the middle, right? The window cuts into many seams. But part of the idea, and people who are familiar with framing, is that this window is going to be framed and, and in such a way that it helps support whatever weight's getting put on there. It's getting transferred through the frame of the window. This thing is, um, you know, I don't know if I wanna, like maybe it would be okay, but we still have the problem that it doesn't poke all the way through. And I've, you know, had various ideas of, of how to maybe trim this, sticking flashing through and stuff like that. But I've decided I think the best method would be to just make a sandwich. In order to help things along, I wanna get these shutters out of the way. Hopefully these aren't too pain in the arse to move back in place. Hmm. Looks like they might be a pain in the arse to get out to begin with. They didn't really intend for you to do this. Oh. Okay, yeah. Something that I'm fathoming is just generally this hole looks like it would just cut into the seam too, right? But not as much. It would just nip it right there. And we can maybe not make completely it round. Maybe go a little bit with the edge to keep the seam. All right, what do we have here? I want it as up here as possible. Maybe right around there. And that's level like that. And I'm eyeballing the seams. Seems pretty good there. Except I'm not quite prepared for what I'm doing here. All right, let's try this again. You know, since I'm going circle hole method, maybe, yeah, maybe it's less important. Oh, this panel's physically narrower. Oh, it's because we're seeing where the actual seams are. You see that in there? See that like stripe? That's showing us where the seams mate. So yeah, it just goes to show us how much we'd be cutting into the seams, like a quarter inch on either side. I just want a couple screws to hold this thing into place so I can pile it out where I'm gonna be putting it. There's also a very deliberate reason why I'm choosing these holes to put the screws through. All right. I'm gonna try cutting this out without getting those bits. It might be tricky, but I'm gonna try. It sucks it's not more up and center, but this should work. Now, before I go and screw that down, I need to double check a certain measurement. Assuming I can find my measuring tape. Where did that popper disappear to? No, seriously, where'd my measuring tape go? There it is, right there. Oh, of course the rain's back. It's one of those days they can't make up if it's mine or it's raining. It gets sunny for like an hour and you're thinking, oh, should be fine. Oh, no, trickling rain. I'm gonna be cutting a hole in the rain, am I? Yeah, it looks like it. 63 inches. The long and short of it is that I have a kind of a workbench that's gonna be coming in here and it has an upper shelf. That upper shelf, just wanna make sure it's gonna clear here. So there's gonna be a section here I can't really use because there's gonna be a fan in front of it, but it'll clear. So I think that's one of the best places for it. You know, if you mount it a little bit higher, you have a little bit more extra clearance, but no, nope, no, nope. this is the idea I came up with. This is the idea I'm gonna stick with now. All right, pilots away. Now, how to cut a nice happy little hole in there. Well, I have an app for that. <laughs> Not Milwaukee cordless. Question is, what blade do I use? Basic metal looks pretty fine. Clean wood, maybe? We're gonna try clean wood. This will penetrate two and a half inches, right? I sure hope so. All right, good thing we have power established in here. Then cutting through a hole in the rain, maybe I should be running GFCI. The blade is just too short. The Allen key also let go and the blade came out. That's awesome. 
Are any of these blades longer? No, that's the longest blade I have for this. I really don't want to use the hacksaw for something like this. It's not going to have the right resolution. All right, let's try it this again. This is nerve wracking because I don't want to screw up this hole. All of a sudden out of nowhere, it just jumps. There's always some friggin' problem. And some of them are coming from the fact that this wall is like thick. I'm actually going to adjust the blade a touch longer. Ah! The blade gets caught and starts bumping up against the outer. And of course the blade comes out again because I can't get in there long enough. All right, so. Keeping with the theme of figuring out another way to do things wrong, I am being unsuccessful in carving out this hole. Oh, yeah, slip of the knife, chowder my hole. Nice. That is going at the wrong angle. Cause the knife to jam up. Ah! You know you're gonna hurt yourself on that sharp. Well, it's not pretty, but I guess it'll do. How am I gonna get this side though? Ah, no, I have to get the saw in there to do that. Ah, I got chips in my mouth. And of course, when I start working on this is when the rain decides to pick up. Considering how much this saw hasn't been used, I don't understand why the little Allen hole is so chowdered. Oh, off to a great start. There goes the blade again. Got ejected outside this time. <laughs> wow. And they call it a hacksaw for a reason because you're gonna Hack your job up if you actually try to do something like this with it. Or not, that kind of worked awesome. Well, maybe we should have done it with this the whole time. Instead of fighting with that other piece of crap. Okay, how accurate can we get here? Huh, well then, lesson learned. <sighs> yeah, that's kind of an ugly hole. Gotta drill some holes, or maybe not yet. Yeah, I might as well get it done. Or I think I should remount it from the outside, then put the holes in. Oh. Yeah, not the right time for that yet. So, as you can see, we got these nice gapers opening into the wall, and I, I don't want that. So I found this tape that I'm hoping is gonna solve the problem. I was uh, trying to figure out various different ways to seal that up and then I found this apparently rubberized waterproof tape that's wide. All the tape that I found that probably would have worked for this was less than two and a half inches. I have to get two and a half inches of penetration here. Apparently they make this childproof. You see a perforation right there, but <laughs> it doesn't seem to work very well. T-Rex. Ferociously strong tape. So ferociously strong, it's stuck to its own wrapper. How do I open this? Oh, it's got an independent backing. Now, what do I do about this bottom hole? I'm thinking it's gonna get covered up. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do something a little special at the bottom hole. Oh, okay. Cutting this is gonna be trouble. My scissors already epically gummed up. My hook knife did it very reluctantly. So should we do a bit of surface prep, sir? Why not? Now let's see if we can do this nice. So, cover up this section. Pull it through. Don't wanna make it, make it somewhat nice. Flip it over. Well, we might have to go out into the rain to finish this. Well, it says it sticks in the rain, so. Mm-hmm. Okay, that wasn't completely terrible. Now let's see how much we need to go around in a circle. <laughs> Sunny, about this much, assuming we overlap this a bit. So, all right, this is where stuff is gonna get messy, because guaranteed I'm gonna have sticky stuff everywhere. Can we get it seated nice? Oh yeah, she's sticky. She's real sticky. Maybe I should have put this up in pieces. Ah! Off to a great start. It's starting to Deviate. Okay, I think you got it mostly straight. Oh, no, it's starting to get twisted now. Come on. Oh boy. No, 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 no. Ah, crap. Ah. Okay. Re-strategize. We'll be here forever, but 
I can think of another way to do it. This stuff wasn't cheap and there was only five feet of it. I think I just wasted like $2. Yeah, that's right. We're just gonna have to put it on piece by piece. That's gonna be the only real way to guarantee results. Faster way to cut it would be nice. I think you get the idea. Some of the people who followed me asked for a goat rodeo. You got one. That piece that I ruined, turns out that was a majority of the roll. So now, in order to continue my project, I have to drop everything, run across town a 20 minute drive to Home Depot, buy another $15 roll of this stuff for that much. So, yeah, nice, awesome. You realize, of course, this stuff's like $20 a roll plus tax. It's costing me uh, almost $50 to make this hole in the wall, which is great. That's exactly how much I wanted to spend to make a hole in the wall. It's good stuff, at least. Like, it's certainly gonna do what I need done here. Would've been great if I had the sound on for my anecdote. Now, crappy thing about cutting sticky stuff is it gums up your knife. At least it looks like the rain's gone now, so I'm gonna be able to finish this project. Okay. Well, that's one of the ugliest holes I've ever made, but it's gonna have to do. Now, what to do next? To be honest, it looks a bit worse on the outside. So I'll save processes before. Theoretically, if I silhouette this hole and level it, it should put this thing, these holes, in exactly the same spot. All right, now the actual screw holes, we're gonna put them right about here. So now we have to pull it down. All right, part of the plan is, oh boy, those blow right through. Yeah, that's taking forever, bud. Let's do it for both sides. All right, so part of the grand plan here is these nuisance holes, I need something in and along the lines of a three inch bolt in order for my uh, pancake to work or my sandwich, but the stock bolts are M6. Uh, no way I'm finding a M6 three inch bolt on a Saturday. I do, however, have a quarter 28 tap. And that's the second time I had to run all the way out to Home Depot is to get the quarter 28 bolts after I realized I could do that. So basically, what I'm gonna be doing is retapping these holes. Now I should have a set of quarter 28 holes. Yay! Now, let's put this assembly back together. If we can, this is uh, kinda burner burner. Oh, you are conflict. Is there some rhyme or reason on how these should be positioned? All right, let's go sort this out outside. <laughs> On the bright side, since I have plenty of this tape left, I should be able to use it to seal up the obsolete vent holes. Oh yeah, that's nice. <clears throat> it's probably once again, I should be investing into some caulk. It's hard for me to see because the sun's blazing in my eyes. Uh-huh, that's exactly where that sits. And it's funny because it, like this hole's mostly gonna get water sealed by that getting pushed against that rubber tape, I think. I'm gonna put some on it anyway, because it's a good idea. All right, I got a nice bead of sealant all on its circumference. Now, with three hands, we will load a screw. Carefully now, carefully line stuff up. Oh yeah, right there like that, okay. Aha, uh -huh. those holes got sealed. A couple more screws. Looks like dab of cock and a screw. Dab of cock and a screw. All right, this outdoor part should be good now. Yeah, we're just gonna smear our cock around, cause why not? Gonna have to turn on the heat if this takes any longer. You know it's gonna take longer. So now, in theory, this is some gaping ventilation, man. Huh, why is that missing the hole? That's not good. Well, it's there. I might just not have enough room for lock nuts or lock washers. Oh boy. Well, this is fun. Doesn't want to buy it with the lock washers. Okay, I need some sort of tool to help this along. Are any of these making their hit? 
<laughs> Come on, three inch should have been a lot, bud. It should have been plenty. All right, remove the lock washer. Oh, I feel that one bit. Yeah, yeah, I just can't use a lock washer, apparently. So three inches still isn't quite long enough, eh? Find your hole, there, there's your hole. Bud, thread into the hole, come on. Oh boy. All you have to do is go into your hole, bud. You know, it's that simple. Yeah, here's your hole. Oh, that one has a lock washer on it. All I had to do was jam, jam something into the socket so it would put force on the bolt. But now this, uh, need to get the tension right because it's gonna start squishing on this. But holy frick, I got a fan manta now. It's got like weird rubber crap inside of it, but there's a fan mounted now. Now, we're gonna do something a little bit silly here. A little bit silly, a little bit experimentally, because I just want to test on this and see how much it does or does not suck. Because I have these power wires hanging right here, which are reserved for the fan. And yeah, I've killed the breaker to this circuit. Ugh, this wire doesn't want to cooperate. This Moretz shot. It's funny because this wire comes all the way from the switch, one continuous run. Part of my no Moret philosophy for this build. All right, so that's gonna work now when it has power, assuming it's going to work. So if I just go ahead and turn on the power, I just go ahead and turn on the fan switch. There she blows. Oh, she sucks good, but I can feel draft getting sucked in around the seals of the door. It's blowing a fair amount out the sides because, you know, back pressure. I think it works a little bit more efficiently if I set it up the way it's supposed to be set up. Hmm, a little bit louder than I expected. Wonder if I should put a fan control on it. What happens if I actually open the door? Do those flaps go wider? Oh yeah, the flaps flap out more. Oh! Yeah, from the outside, that pupper's definitely moving air. <laughs> yeah, that thing definitely moves air. That's why I wanted it in here, because I wanted to be able to, you know, get into things. You know, maybe I'm doing a weld or, or something gets smoky. I want it. At the very least, the hot, hot summer heat. It's chilly in here now that it's sucked in a bunch of uh, cold air. Let's turn on the heat. Now one challenge is going to be to control ventilation. Those vents that used to be on the back wall here, I kind of want to put them on the front so air can get sucked in there and out. However, I'm going to polish up on this. Look at all that stickiness that's in there. We're going to seal up this other vent real quick. There we go. I had some convoluted plan gluing an old shingle up to here, but this is better. Oh, it's, it's good anyway, good enough. Break for dinner. Oh, light in the face. So now we're gonna see what we can do about putting conduit in here. Yes, gotta get a piece here to there. Uh, I might wanna turn this light out from blinding me. All right, so uh, we need connectors. So I'm trying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep the, uh, stock position here. Hopefully wires go through without too much trouble because this little section of this enclosure is very small. It's already proving difficult to get this threaded on there. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh, well that's working nicely. Oh yeah, that's on nice and tight now. End of the light fixture now though, because I'm going to be trying to get a conduit from the light fixture right to the fan. That's anyway, part of the plan. Uh, can we get the implement up in here? Not really, eh? Kick it old school. Just jam a plier up there. Okay, that was effective. All right. I'd like to determine how far this is from the wall. Incoming head, four and a half inches. Back up here, that puts four and a half inches right about there, which means our conduit is about nine and a quarter inches. All right, so nine and a quarter inch bend down to here. Now let's see if we have enough conduit here because we need a piece that's nine and a quarter plus about 21 plus eight. Nine, 21, eight. 
38 inches of conduit I need. So let's browse our scrap pile here. I got this piece that came off the old heater configuration. It's already got a bend on it ready to go. It's definitely 38 inches. Yeah. I might need to uh, straighten this one a bit, but yeah, it just, just, just starts bending like right when I want it to not bend. Okay, let's see if we can uh, undo. Maybe not like that. This floor is not gonna last. We're doing an offset delete. Did I get it? Oh, I think I might have gotten it. So nine and one quarter right there. Let's double check my measurement, right? Yeah. All right, so how's this look? Pretty good. How close to the wall is it? Now, I don't want that to bend up. So what I think I'm gonna do is right around here. I'm just gonna push it a little bit this way. Now that's a 22 degree angle, right? Mm-hmm. That's just over 10. Let's see how it looks. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Just wanted to uh, kind of synchronize with the ceiling there. Now the thing is, we're in a precarious position where we've got to calculate where the next bend's gonna be. I'm always using that term now. Right here, the wire has to go downwards. Now that's almost a 90. So I think if we use the uh, stub rules, what was that, like 77? Yeah, that's almost a 90. So we're gonna use stub rules here. From this point where we want it to bend downwards, we're gonna come back five inches. All right, how's this gonna work now? Like that, and then it has to go, if we put that back there. It's just a question of getting this lined up now. Pretty much like that. All right but not quite a 90. How's that look? That's like a 60. Little bit of trial and error here. I missed my mark. That's great. Yeah, we're way off. That means I get to bend it back now. Fortunately, when you have a fair amount of slack, you can. So how, how did that happen? You know, we went five inches back. That's still something I'm getting the hang of, eh? Oh boy. Well, this guy's getting a bit screwed up, so. Can we figure out what we did wrong? Yeah, we wanted it here. What's funny is based on these geometries, it should have lined up. I don't know why it didn't. Yeah, what the f is going on? Why is it going off by so much? I do not understand. I do not understand. Stub, stubs to five inches. Back of 90 starts here. Am I supposed to go five inches in the other direction? That's it, isn't it? Still getting used to this. The problem is this is one of my last conduit bends and then I'm not gonna need to do it again for a good while. And then when I do have to do it again, I'm going to have forgotten some of this. At least this isn't annoying to me. Holy f what am I doing wrong? Seriously. It goes down this way, all right? And if it goes down this way, you do a five inch bend, right? Starting from there, you f bend it down, right? You'd think it even lines up like you should, but no, for some reason, when you start bending it down from this position, it doesn't. And this conduit's collapsed now, because it's overworked. Okay. From what I'm seeing, part of the problem is, because I'm not doing a proper 90, it's only four and a quarter I need to come back. It's really, it's a 70 something degree, right? If I make this flush with the pipe straight and I measured it, it's four and a quarter. Oh yeah, that's looking better. A little bit more though. Yeah, I think that'll hit it. We just have to trim her down now. All right, now let's see if we can't get this fitted to place. Yeah, there we go, bud. Little bit off, just like a little, oh, actually mostly this stupid end piece here is bent. Ugh, annoying. Okay, that's good now. Better be good now. This isn't tight, is it? Okay, it wants to sit back there for some reason. 
Ah, it's just, this is a little bit far. I'm gonna pull it back just to, there we go, yeah. Now, part of the moment of truth is to see if I have enough slack to get down there. I thought I did. I'm worried I might fall a touch short. Oh, 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 something's bottoming out. They made it there, they just get hung up because the stupid connectors are a bit dumb. I'm gonna give it a little like that. Little rents so that we're gonna cut off after, right? Right. Oh, there they are. Damn, we got more than enough slack with this route. I'm gonna get this all tucked up in here again. I'll give this one a little twist too. Hey, don't you be the last glitch. Toddy friggin' da. Oh boy, it looks like our neutral is just a touch short. So we gotta like tweak on our connectors up here to get the extra slack that I need. It's getting hung up on this ground wire. Okay, let's uh, tuck this away here, right? Right, I can turn all the lights on. <laughs> can you still see me? Okay, so, oh, it's too short. Just the neutral, just the neutral, just a touch too short. And really, all we need to do is rearrange these neutral wires which are already well twisted up. I think the easiest way to do it is to pull it back through. Around here like this. Okay, that should be enough now. Should, should. Okay, gotta snip off this crap. So, what the f Someone's playing with fireworks apparently. Okay, that game is a surprise. Fireworks. So this last part might be a touch tricky because we have some tight holes in here, but let's get the ground into place and I need to screwdrive that ground. Mm. Strip off the excess. All right, so that white's gonna be good. We'll get that red about the same length. I'll call in the strippers. Now we need marais that are gonna fit in here. That's the thing, this is all so tiny, but stranded wires on there, we should be able to get away with the little orange ones. Can we now? Can we? The little orange ones. Yeah, feels good. Yeah. All right, well, let's go turn the power back on and give it a test. That circuit's now live and, oh yeah. You can feel it sucking on the doors. So that's just a question to tuck these puppers in there somehow. Huh, tight. Perfect, but tight. Get the little, little cover on. Raise refer to manual for the wiring instructions. Oh, that hole's a bit stripped. That one's not. Good enough. Ha! Oh, I feel like maybe a strap there. Maybe just one strap. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah! I have my fan. And do you know what that means? My electrical installation here is effectively complete. I've had some ideas of, you know, maybe dabbling with them. Um, uh, I'll wait. I've had ideas of dabbling with maybe a GFCI on here. If I find moisture's coming in, adding some sort of a handy box piggybacked onto this assembly, maybe a speed controller. I think this fan, these fan, motors can be speed controlled and they do make what look like dimmers that say fan speed controller on them. So maybe putting that on because this thing rips, man. It rips, maybe I don't need that much rippage. But at any rate, we can pan around and find that it's all done. We got our heater plumbed in, got the Smurf helmet, lighting control, going to the lighting. And now my conduit going to the fan. We're gonna do a little bit of a test. I'm gonna sit down. I gotta chuff me a bunch of vape. And then I'm gonna turn this on and see how quick it clears out. Now, unfortunately, we gotta go over there to turn this thing on. Oh, oh, it's going all over. How long does it take for me to get clear? Oh, I can see the clouds moving in this general direction. And it gets cold because it's sucking in all sorts of fresh air from outside. I'd have to have the heater cranked even more. Well, what can I say, it works. So I think we're done here for now.